Hello there. Uh, today I'm doing a suit up video for the suit here, Lucky. Uh, it's been requested to do a suit up video for it. And while I'm at it, I might as well just show you how, uh, how you put on my suits that I make. Uh, it's the same for both Digitigrade and Plantigrade, except of course Plantigrade doesn't have all the stuffing and whatnot in it to worry about. Um, Lucky is a Digitigrade suit. She's currently for sale. She wasn't my personal suit for a while, but life happens. And uh, yeah, so first thing you want to do, obviously, is always brush your suit. Just I use a, a gentle, just non-tangle hairbrush. Uh, you can also use like a, a dog brush or whatever, but these I find are gentler on the fur than a dog brush is. And uh, yeah, there's going to be a whole lot of brushing here, so I'm probably just going to edit this bit out. And I will be back when I'm done brushing. Okay, so I'm back. I have Lucky all brushed up here and ready to go. So I guess we'll just get straight to it. Um, first things first, obviously, is the bodysuit. Now, the first thing you'll notice about Lucky is she is very large. Like, pictures can never quite capture just how big this girl is. But she's really fun to wear. Um, yeah, and inside here, you can kind of see, there's a, a loose pillow. Oh, my husband just got home, so I might have to cut again in a second. But uh, anyway, there's just a, a big loose pillow in here. It's got a zipper in it, so you can uh, either take out the stuffing for washing it, or you can adjust the stuffing as much as you like. Uh, it's very, very versatile how, how many people this suit can fit. Basically, as long as it fits your upper body, it should fit the legs. Just because you can always take out stuffing or add stuffing as you need. And most of my suits, uh, digi suits, are like this unless they're, you know, a slim digi or something. And then uh, in here we have uh, the hawk padding, which is sewn in. So you don't have to worry about that. It's always just going to be there. It's easy enough to wash and whatnot. And her tail is also sewn on. Oh, where is it? Oh, here it is. <laughs> her tail is also sewn on the bodysuit. Again, this is a, a standard feature for my suits, unless otherwise stated that the tail is always sewn on and you have a second tail with your suit for partial wear. Uh, this tail is really fun. It's got a nice twist to it. I really like it. <clears throat> Uh, for bigger tails that are sewn onto the bodysuit, sometimes what I'll do is I'll put uh, belt loops on the inside just for extra stability because the big tails are obviously heavy. Um, yeah, and so let's get to it. So first things first, you're going to stick your leg in here kind of, you want the padding on the outside of your leg, you can adjust it once your leg is in, but uh, your leg basically goes on the inside I don't know if you can see, because it's hard to see on black fur, but basically on the inside of the leg is where your leg is going to go, and then straight out through the bottom. So here we go. Stick it in there. There's one. And the stuffing will look a little goofy at first, you got to adjust it, but... First things first, you gotta get your feet in there. Kinda just wiggle it up. And again, you'll wanna play with the stuffing levels to find one that's good for you. You generally want something that's easy to put on and take off, but uh, so not too tight and too well stuffed, but not so loose that it looks super baggy. So, I'm not sure how much you can see here, but I got my legs in there now. Now before I do anything else, I put the feet on because once you have the whole thing on, it's kind of hard to maneuver and whatnot. So here's a foot. All my feet are indoor style, sewn and stuffed with no foam. But even though they're indoor feet, you can wear them outside and whatnot. Um, I've worn Lucky outside on multiple occasions and you just wash them and they come out looking just about like new. So. The dirtier they are, they are, the more stain remover and whatnot you can use. 
Um, but yeah, basically you just toss them in the washer and uh, uh, dry them in front of a fan. So you don't put them through the dryer unless you put it on air fluff mode. But yeah, the best way to do it is just stick them in front of a fan and every few hours just rotate it so that the air goes through the whole foot. You can always test by sticking your hand in it. And if it still feels wet, then you need to move it around and dry it out some more. <clears throat> I'm actually just going to cut here for a minute and go say hi to my husband, and then I'll be back. One second. And I'm back. So, uh, yeah, we're going to put the feet on now. Uh, I recommend sitting down for this part, either on a chair or on the floor. It's uh, a lot easier than trying to stand and maneuver at all. So I'm going to do that now. I just have my chair over here. I'll sit on that. Now you might have to shift the padding up just a bit so that you can comfortably sit on it. And down we go. You want to pull your foot up and slip the foot on. Uh, this, this foot paw is lined with um, a cotton fabric. I don't think you can see it. But uh, with this one, you can wear socks because the cotton isn't going to hold on to it too much. But I recommend going barefoot in the feet that are lined with uh, fleece, which I actually prefer doing now because uh, it dries faster, it's comfier to wear, and it doesn't add anything to the heat factor. So, yeah, so these ones you can wear socks. Um, but my newer style, I recommend barefoot. Now the first few times you put your feet on, they might be a little bit tight. You might need to maneuver your feet in there. These are pretty well worn, so they're already ready to go. But this style of foot paw anyway has a break-in period. Um, well, fursuits in general generally have a break-in period. They always get comfier to wear over time because the fur stretches out and everything just starts to settle. So the first few times you wear your suit, it might be a little bit uncomfortable. But the more you wear it, the comfier it gets. And when you put the feet on, you want to just kind of pull them up and then take the leg and pull it down over the foot. Hide the, uh, the seams and whatnot. Should be a fairly seamless look. I'm going to adjust the camera here for a minute. Right here. Down. Now you can see. So her feet are on and they're all blended in well. Um, if you have friends to help you when you're suiting up, you can always ask them to help you adjust your padding, make sure the uh, hawks are on the back of your leg and everything. Usually it lines up pretty good on its own, but it never hurts to have a friend to help you out. Um, okay, so the next thing. Well, if you had a suit uh, that has a separate tail and has a tail hole, then this is where you would uh, stick the belt loops through the hole, put your belt through it, and then put it on. Uh, but this one doesn't have um, a separate tail, obviously, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, actually, I'm going to bring the camera back up here for a minute while we adjust the padding here. So you kind of just... It's a stretchy fabric that this... Uh, pillow is made out of so you can as long as you just grab a big handful of the fabric not just a little piece because you don't want to rip out the seams but just kind of shift it around so that it's over the front of your leg and then you can adjust as you go if you notice there's lumpy bits you can maneuver it around you generally only have to do this when you're just putting the suit on if you're you know, if you stop for a break, you shouldn't have to adjust it too much. Um, after I wash it, obviously, the padding is separate and taken out. And it could take a few minutes to just shove it in there. And then it, that, that first adjustment always takes longer than when the padding's already been in there after a wear. <clears throat> so you kind of also want to pull up the back as you go so that it's not falling down too far. Just kind of wiggle it up. Kind of pull the legs up as well. Just wiggle around, get it moving. Get it so it feels nice. There. 
I think that's about it. Looks pretty good. Again, you can always have your friends check for you if you're suiting with friends. Which, by the way, I if you're going out in public and, you know, not to a furry specific event, I definitely suggest going with somebody, whether you're with uh, other fellow fursuiter friends or you just have a handler along because you don't want to get in a situation where you have some bratty teenager trying to harass you and nobody to help you out, you know? These are very expensive costumes and if you don't have somebody to kind of crowd control, things can get out of hand pretty quickly. Uh, so especially depending on the area where you live. If you live in a very accepting open area where everybody's okay with everything, then you're probably okay, but at least the first few times until people get to know you in your area, you should definitely go with somebody. Now, uh, next thing we do is actually a little bit different than most fur suits, which is kind of why I wanted to do this video, is I put on the hand paws next. Now, most people do this as like a last step, but I find it's really annoying to try and pull that fur over by yourself. And I like to have my suits uh, so that you're able to suit up by yourself, just in case you don't have somebody around to help you out. Um, uh, these hand paws are lined uh, with a nice cotton fabric. I actually don't really line my hand paws anymore, um, just because they don't really need to be lined. They're still just as comfy without the lining, and they actually dry faster without the lining. Um, and it, it, the, the only thing that it would really do compared to no lining is that uh, it would kind of protect the backing of the fur, but that would just, uh, basically that just means that when you pull your hand out, there's not as much fur clumps on it. Um, like, there shouldn't really be any with lining. Um, whereas uh, an unlined paw, you can pull your hand out and you know there's fur stuck to it. But it doesn't make the hand paws last any less long, and I just find it's comfier without the lining these days, so I just don't do it anymore. Um, yeah, but these ones are lined. I mean, if somebody really wanted to have lined paws, I can still do that for them. I just recommend against it. Let's get a little brushing as you go. So there's one paw. Oh, by the way, about the under armor that I'm wearing. Um, this shirt is from a brand called Columbia. It's a cooling under armor. So when you get wet and sweaty, then when the air hits it, it cools down. Um, you don't really notice all that much difference while you're wearing the suit. Uh, you might notice a little bit if there's a breeze or whatnot. But the moment you take off the upper body and you start to get air on that wet under armor, it, uh, it cools down a lot and you're able to go again a lot sooner than with just regular under, under armor. So I really like this. I don't think they make it in pants, so I don't have any pants of it. But the pants that I'm wearing are actually just regular yoga pants. Um, they're comfy, they work fine, uh, they're not super thick, they're the thinner kind. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's what I use. You can use pretty much any kind of Under Armour. Um, okay, so now the next step. You got your hand paws on. So you find one arm, you kind of put your arm in, give a nice stretch to get your hand all the way through, as you can see. And then your hand paws in. I always just do kind of a little suit dance when I'm putting on my suit because it helps fit everything into place and it's just comfier. Um, now when you put them on this way you'll notice some of the fur kind of gets caught. So you just take your brush and you just brush at that seam to pull out the fur. And it's just about hidden. You can always get uh, help with, uh, with this from a friend or whatnot. But when you're moving around you don't really see it at all. And then the next arm goes in, again, same thing, little dance, little stretch, and you're in. And same thing, you can brush it out, a little brush, make it a little bit more seamless. One thing you will notice, if this is your first time fursuiting or whatnot, is, uh, it's a little bit exhausting putting on a digifool suit. You usually get a little bit hot and tired just getting started. So yeah, I, I kind of recommend like if you're gonna go out suiting uh, at like an old day event or something, after you put on your suit, don't go do crazy things right away. Just kind of 
sit and relax for a minute, be cute, whatever. Just give yourself time uh, to cool down a little bit. And I also always recommend, if you have the opportunity, always keep, um, like the day before you go suiting, stick a nice big water bottle in the freezer, let it freeze completely, and then pull it out and carry it with you the next day because then you have cold water all day long. Unless, of course, you're at a furry event and they have cold water all day for you. The best way to prevent overheating is to just stay well hydrated with cold water because the cold water cools you down and you can stay suiting a lot longer. Okay, so now we're going to zip this up here. Come up close again. On, uh, on my zippers here I add a little tab so they're easy to grab with fursuit paws. Now the fur should generally stay out of the way. You can kind of just coax it out of the way here. And you might have to pull the seam tight to get it to stay. But usually you can just start zipping and it'll go. And it's zipped. Just like that. Nice and easy. Give it a little brushing and you can't even tell it's there. It's nice. Okay. So we're just about done here. I'll, I'll adjust the camera so you can see the, the whole thing here almost. So we got our legs looking nice, we got our nice big tail, a good old fursuit booty, hand paws are all good. We're just about ready to be a cute fluffy animal. Okay, so the last piece of course is the head. Um, just a little thing about my heads is I always use buck ram for the eyes and I color them with um, alcohol markers. So they stay on pretty good there. Uh, when you're washing the head, always hand wash it. Never stick it in the washer or anything just to avoid any potential damages. Um, for the most part, you really just need to spot clean. Like you can use a disinfectant spray on the inside. The most important thing to do is to make sure you set it in front of a fan to dry after every time you use it. Every time it's a little bit wet, get it completely dry before putting it away or anything and do it as soon as possible when you're done suiting. Don't leave it like a week and then say, oh, shoot, I forgot to put it in the front of the fan. Because once the mold gets in there, it gets a lot harder to clean. Um, so yeah, you, do, you don't want to get it moldy. Um, but yeah, generally, just a good spot clean to spray it out, sit in front of a fan. When you store your suit, uh, I suggest storing it with some kind of scent pack. If you're in a country that sells Scentsy products, you can Google, uh, go to Scentsy.com. They have amazing scent packs. I have, uh, here, I'll grab one for you so you can see what it looks like. I have two of them for my personal use. I have this one, Ocean Breeze, which I'm actually going to be um, giving with Lucky when she sells. Uh, this one will go with her. It's a nice scent. Uh, and this scent pack is like two, three years old now, and it still works just fine. It's still very nice and, and uh, strong smelling. And you can just stick this inside the head when you're storing it, or inside whatever bin you're storing the suit in. And uh, the next time you pull it out, it'll smell great. Uh, I really like Scentsy products just because they're so strong and so long-lasting. Like, I have uh, the first full suit I ever made. Um, uh, her name was Scrap. I stored her in a, a pl plastic tub with just one little scent pack. It was like candy apple or something. And uh, I went suiting for a whole weekend at a furry con. And I all weekend, even though she'd only been stored uh, stored with the scent pack, I didn't have a chance to wash her during the weekend, obviously. Um, the whole weekend I kept getting comments about how nice she smelled. So I really, I highly recommend these products. Uh, if you're in a country that doesn't have them, um, I currently am, kind of sucks. Uh, you might be able to, you know, contact somebody in a neighboring country that has it and pay a little bit extra shipping to get it to you or get one of your friends to buy it for you and mail it to you, that kind of stuff. Or, of course, you can make your own or get them from uh, another fursuit maker. These are just the only ones that I've tested so I can speak for. So that's my little plug there <laughs> for Scentsy products. Highly recommend. Anyway, uh, so yeah, for these guys... Um, this this one is built on a new creations head base, uh, expanding foam head base, and I finished it myself. Um, but with all all my suits, the uh, ventilation is through the mouth, obviously, and a little bit through the eyes, mostly through the mouth. 
Uh, if you ever have a suit and you think, oh, I just, I wish the mouth would be more open, I wish I could get more air in here, consider finding a little prop that goes good with your character. Like, for Lucky, I have a, uh, a plush rat that I got at Ikea, actually. And if you just wedge that in the side of her mouth, it keeps the mouth nice and open and it looks cute at the same time, so... Uh, but for the most part, she's she's good. I can fit glasses in her before I got co contacts. Um, but, you know, when you're wearing glasses inside a fursuit head, whether it fits or not, you generally have issues with fogging and whatnot. Um, but I found that putting cookie in here to keep the mouth a bit more open, that, uh, that really helped with the fogging issue. It wasn't so bad. Um, I don't really need to keep her mouth open hardly at all without uh, the fogging issue anymore, because now that I have contacts... Uh, the ventilation ventilation is just fine. Uh, the most important thing, like I say, is just staying well hydrated. And with pretty much all my suits, you can just open that mouth up nice and wide and stick a big old water bottle in there. Like, you'd be surprised at the size of water bottles you can fit in these mouths. They're not, like, uh, especially foam heads, they're not, you know, made of glass. They're not going to break if you're, if you're opening this mouth or whatnot. So don't be afraid to just, you know, give it a little bit of wear. Um... Yeah, anyway, so, last piece here. Oh, I'll just show you the inside. Uh, my heads are all fully lined. Generally, I like to line the the face area with black fleece. Uh, let's see, if I can get it so you can see it here. You can kind of see the black fleece in there, there in the eye area. That makes it nice and soft to wear. And then the rest of it is in a kind of stretchy fabric. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. My uh, my husband decided to come in and be a goober. Um, but anyway, yes, so the, the face is lined with fleece, rest of it lined with like a stretchy cotton fabric. Um, it's really kind of basic, you know, but looks nice, easy to clean. And also when you have a lined head like this, you don't really need to wear a balaclava, as long as, like I say, you spray it out uh, when you're done using it and you dry it completely after you're done using it. Um, they can actually go a long time before needing a, a full wash, like dunk it in water and whatnot. And what, if you do decide to give it a full wash, just um, try and avoid getting the eyes wet as much as you can. Uh, they should be okay because they're alcohol markers, but I haven't really stress tested the eyes at all on my suit heads. Um, but yeah, like I say, you can always just wash the head pretty normally. Just don't scrub the eyes or anything and just... Actually, uh, what I suggest for giving a, a head a full wash is getting a small uh, carpet cleaner, a hand carpet cleaner, and just take that little wand and just wash all around the outside and all around the inside. And uh, yeah, that, that usually works really great for giving them a clean. Uh, but like I say, as long as you take good care of it, shouldn't ever need anything too crazy. Um, so, that's enough of my rambling. Here we go. So you just kind of open up the neck, and usually with my heads I like to kind of like pull them back over my head, so I put my chin in first and then pull it back over my face and my head. And then you just kind of adjust the neck out a little bit, brush it out, and you're cute and adorable! Yay! With Lucky I uh... I like to put on uh, kind of like a little persona with her. I'll, sometimes it's nice to just uh, wear a qu silent suit, but with Lucky I like to interact with people without talking, so I usually go like this. <clears throat> just make cute little cat sounds. Kids usually love it and whatnot. Um, but yeah, that's what I did with Lucky. Uh, obviously, whoever buys her can do whatever they want with her. But, uh, yeah, so that's how you wear one of my suits. Taking them off is much the same, except it takes a lot less time. You just pull off the head, take off your hand paws, unzip the upper body, and you're good to go. Um, usually, if you ever have to just take off a hand paw and pay for something or whatnot, uh, you can just put the hand paw back on and get somebody to tuck the fur over. Uh, if you're taking a break and you have the upper body off, you might as well just put it on the regular way anyway. Like, put on your hand paws first and then the suit. Because, I mean, you're already halfway there anyway. Um, yeah, and I mean, yeah, then you're ready, you go, you have fun, you be adorable all day, it's great. 
anyway, uh, thanks for my watching my video, and I hope it was informational for you. Ignore the mess in here. I have to. My workspace is my bedroom underneath my loft bed. I don't have a whole lot of space, but uh, yeah. <laughs>